The JP Morgan JEPI ETF and the Charles Schwab SCHD ETF are two very popular ETFs with two very different strategies. Now throughout different timeframes, both ETFs have outperformed and even lagged the market, but on a longer term time frame, between these two ETFs, there's only one clear winner moving forward. Now in this video, we are going to dig deep into the SCHD ETF as well as JEPI, see exactly how each of the ETFs work and all they have to offer. Then towards the end of the video, we are going to dig deep into the numbers and figure out which ETF is number one and the clear winner for long-term investors. Now stick around because we have a lot to go through. Right after you, please drop a like in this video and subscribe for more future content like this. Now, when it comes to investing, of course, there's lots of different ways to make money. And what I always say is that one strategy that works for one person may not work for another. And that's why I think everyone should have their own strategy and stick to it long term. Now, for some more growth style ETFs or stocks are their strategy. For others, it might be more dividend, cash flow, income focused. And of course, for some like myself, I have a little bit of a mix between the two. But when it comes to SCHD versus JEPI, let's go through each of the ETFs, break them down, and see what they have to offer. So first off, starting with the SCHD ETF. Now, this ETF strategy and objective is pretty straightforward. The investment seeks to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses the total return of the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index. To pursue its goal, the fund generally invests in stocks that are included in this index. The index is designed to measure the performance of high dividend yielding stocks issued by U.S. companies that have a record of consistently paying dividends, selected for fundamental strength relative to their peers. Based on financial ratios, the fund will invest at least 90% of its net assets into stocks. Now, some more highlights about this ETF, a straightforward, low-cost fund offering potential tax efficiency. The fund can serve as part of the core or complement in a diversified portfolio, tracks an index focused on quality and sustainable dividends, and invests in stocks selected for fundamental strength relative to its peers based on financial ratios. So now that we looked a little bit deeper into SCHD, let's dig deep into the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF and see what this ETF has to offer. ETF seeks to deliver monthly distributable income and equity market exposure with less volatility. The fund is managed by a set of portfolio managers with over 60 years of combined experience. Now, the fund not only invests in equities, but also utilizes options as a way to generate higher income by writing out of the money S&P 500 call options. And because the JEP ETF is so focused on a strategy of high income based approach, and this is not only from dividend stocks, but also utilizing derivatives and cover calls to juice the high distribution yield with the goal being that between the dividend payments and the premium, the shareholders should be passed along a good sized dividend on a monthly basis. Now, JEPI is very well known for this covered call strategy. And if you didn't know, a covered call is an option contract where the option seller owns the underlying stock or ETF that they are going to sell. Selling a covered call to a third party gives the buyer the right to purchase the underlying security at an agreed upon price, which is known as the strike price, by an agreed upon date, which is known as the expiration date. Every option contract has a buyer side and a seller side. So when selling the option, you earn the premium, the buyer pays the premium. Selling a covered call means that if the underlying security price goes above the strike price by expiration, you would be required to sell the shares to the opposing side. Now by implementing this covered call strategy, JEPI doesn't only earn a large amount of premium on an ongoing basis, but also by selling covered calls, it helps with downside protection if the market was to really turn for the worse. So when it comes down to it, is JEPI actually worth investing into? Well, if you ask me, you really just have to know exactly what JEPI is, how it works, and what you're actually investing your money into. Far too often, investors will look at a high yield and see monthly paid dividends and get instantly attracted, especially if you are a newer dividend investor. Now, I'm definitely not trying to attack any of you. When I was newer to dividend investing, I used to sort all the lists by highest dividend to the least high dividend and try to buy into the highest paying dividends thinking that that's the only metric I should pay attention to, and for some reason thinking that that would get me rich. But as history goes, it didn't take long until I was burned by multiple high yield dividend traps. And although I don't think personally that the JP Morgan ETF known as JEPI is a dividend trap by any means, I do think investors need to be careful in general when investing into higher yielding options. So when it comes to JEPI or any investment, make sure to dig deep and understand the investment to its full extent. So now that we dug into both the ETFs and we all understand how both ETFs work and what they have to offer, let's stack up SCHD next to JEPI on multiple different timeframes using the total return metric, which is price return plus dividends included, and see how each of them have performed on different timeframes. 
So over the last month, Jeppy's the winner at minus 1.5 versus SCHD minus 2.6. The last six months, Jeppy's also the winner at 5.63% where SCHD is basically flat. Year to date, also another important metric, 5.18% return for JEPI, which is not all that great considering how great the market has done year to date, but SCHD is much worse at minus 1.52%. Over the last year, more the same. SCHD is basically flat, JEPI is up 5.44%. Now, because JEPI hasn't been around all that long, the longest time frame we have to go off of, as far as comparing the two, is a three year. And SCHD wins at 41.96% return, versus JEPI's 33.06%. Either way, in a three-year time frame, not all that bad, but SEHD is the winner. But hold on just one minute, I think it's only safe to look into JEPI and SEHD's 30-year outlook on the dividend calculator with $100,000 starting principal and a $1,200 annual contribution. So for JEPI, we have a 10.22% initial starting dividend yield and 30 years invested, Drip turned on, monthly distribution, let's see in theory what we'd end up with. So Jeppy over 30 years would have around $1.4 million of principal, and this is once again off a $100,000 initial investment, and just all the dividends reinvested, and $150,000 per year in dividends. Not so bad at all. Now for SCHD, we have the same $100,000 starting, $1,200 per year. We have a 3.5% initial starting dividend yield for SCHD, an 8% expected annual dividend amount increase, we have 4% share price increase for 30 years with drip turned on, quarterly distribution. Let's see what we get. So we officially do have a winner. SCHD would end up with $1.54 million, in theory with $167,000 per year in dividends. So it just goes to show that even though SCHD does have a starting smaller dividend yield with the higher annual expected dividend amount increases and of course the share price appreciation, investors in theory would still be better off buying into SCHD most likely long term, at least going off of all these numbers. Now when it comes to investing into something like the JEPI ETF, which is a very high yielding ETF, the main reason why investors are drawn to it is likely because of the idea of higher income generation from the start. When investing into lower yielding assets, even assets that have the potential to grow their dividend over the long term, it's going to take the investor quite a bit of years in order to see a large amount of income start to be generated from the starting yield because it's much lower than that that you would find in something like the JEPI ETF. Now keep in mind, something like JEPI might be for individuals who rely on investment income to do things like cover their living expenses or fund their retirement. But there is going to be a downside of this likely, the total return and the capital appreciation potential might be much less than other ETFs out there. So for the investors that are more interested in generating income and a little bit less interested in generating total return or capital appreciation down the line, JEPI could be a great valid investment for you. But the biggest piece of advice I have to anyone is to ask themselves, what am I truly looking to get out of this investment? And does this investment match what I'm looking for? But I wanna hear from you guys down below when it comes to the SCHD versus JEPI arguments. Which of the two ETFs are you a bigger fan of and why? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like in it and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.